over the raging Hollywood Rapids on the James River, nestled between downtown Richmond and Southside, is Belle Isle. And Belle Isle is just that, a beautiful island. But over its 400 year history, it's been a house of many people. From the Native Americans that settled in this area in pre-colonial times, to the skilled bikers of today, there's a lot to see. So let's jump right in. Earliest accounts of Belle Isle say that Native Americans lived on this land. This was a prime area for fishing, and Native Americans used fishing traps called weirs. From 1607 to 1608, John Smith, one of the leaders of Jamestown, was part of a group of men who planned to explore and chart the Chesapeake area. Early on in 1607, John Smith and his crew came upon Belle Isle, or as they would refer to it as, Broad Rock Island. This is due to the large and wide rocks that you can see in and around the island, not unlike the rock structure you can see behind me. From now on, I will refer to Belle Isle as Broad Rock Island until the point in time in history where the island began to be referred to as Belle Isle. In 1676, William Byrd I acquired the island for the settlers, and in 1742, his son William Byrd II established Richmond on the north bank of the James. His family sold Broad Rock Island to entrepreneur John Harvey in 1776, whose heirs in turn sold it to John and Gabriella Brockenborough, who leased the island out to Jacqueline B. Harvey, Philip Thornton, and John Hughes. I know these are a lot of names and passing of the island's ownership, but it is important to understand these building blocks for the events to come. Taking a leaf out of the Native American's book, the settlers' first operation here was a fishery. However, the first real businesses wouldn't start until the early 1800s. Once this island was sold and leased, a mill, a mill race, houses, a dam, and iron and nail factories were constructed here. These were constructed between 1814 and 1836. Two of these buildings were constructed specifically by two separate companies. In 1814, the Old Dominion Iron and Nail Company constructed one, and in 1815, the Belle Isle Rolling Milling and Slitting Manufactory constructed the other. This brick wall here is what is left of the latter, and this building was powered by the mill race, which is seen behind it. The metal tunnel here housed the turbine, which was moved by water. In turn, this turbine moved a series of belts that helped power the manufactory. Behind me is a remnant of the Old Dominion Iron and Nail Company. This metal frame used to be a part of a factory that constructed tank parts for Chrysler Motors during World War I. It was jokingly referred to as the Chrysler Building. In 1836, the Belle Isle Manufacturing Company would acquire the ironworks, and this is when Broad Rock Island would start to be referred to as Belle Isle. However, in 1851, the Old Dominion Iron and Nail Company would buy the Belle Isle Manufacturing Company. Sometime in the 1850s, a railroad spur connecting to the Danville and Richmond Railroad was built from the south bank of the James River onto the south end of Belle Isle. The railroad spur was later extended to the north end of Belle Isle, across this train trestle to the north bank of the James River. This train bridge will become very important later. The quarries behind me were in operation from the early to mid 1800s. They were used to gather granite, which was a very popular building material at the time. However, granite would soon fall out of favor to concrete. The reason these quarries are now filled with water is because when the prospectors were mining them out, they hit two cracks that allowed water from the James River to seep in. The base for the steam-powered equipment for the quarries still exists. The 1860s found our country in a great turmoil. The American Civil War had begun and Richmond was named capital of the South. 
In June of 1862, the Confederacy opened a prisoner of war camp on the island for prisoner exchanges with the North. 5,000 men were brought here and by September 23rd of the same year, most of the men had been exchanged and the camp was closed. It wasn't closed for long, however, as on January 17, 1863, prisoner exchanges stopped and the camp was reopened, but soon closed again. On May 13, 1863, the camp reopened once more, but the prisoner exchanges soon broke down and were no longer made. February of 1864 saw the Confederates evacuating Belle Isle and sending the Union prisoners south. And in October of that year, the island was completely evacuated and the camp was closed for good. Richmond fell to the Union on April 2, 1865. Sadly, due to severe overcrowding, many Union soldiers were left to battle the elements and disease, practically sleeping in holes in the ground. Many would pass away in these camps due to poor conditions. Around 20,000 Union prisoners were brought through the camp throughout the war. The Union soldiers were buried on the island here, but the bodies were later moved. This pit here is not part of Belle Isle's natural structure. It was dug out by the Confederacy during the Civil War, when Belle Isle was being used as a prisoner of war camp. The intention was to place large cannons here to protect the Isle from attack from the Union. However, due to the Hollywood Rapids being so ravaging, attack from the North was virtually impossible, and cannons were never placed here. After the war, Belle Isle's industry continued to thrive. In 1876, the Ironworks Oil House was constructed to hold flammable materials and dangerous assets for the ironworks on the island. During the mid to 1980s, while the Robert E. Lee Memorial Bridge was being reconstructed, the stone slab roofing of the oil works building was removed and the oil works building was completely buried in sand to protect it from the construction. In 1904, the Upper Appomattox Company created the Belle Isle Hydroelectric Power Plant. This was a marvel in technology as it was one of the first in the country. While not the first, the first hydro plant was constructed in Richmond along the canal. This plant was used to power factories on Belle Isle and in Richmond. It was also used to power the trolley system. That's right, in the early 1900s, we had a hydroelectric power plant, clean renewable energy, powering a public transportation system. In 1925, the Virginia Electric Power Company, or VEPCO, would buy this power plant. Today, we can still see the gates used to keep the debris out, as well as the gate cleaner used to clear the debris away. It rode on the rails placed on this wall and used its metal teeth to clear away debris. The electricity poles and bases can still be seen around and on the island. In 1963, the hydroelectric power plant was shut down due to high upkeep. Having to constantly remove debris from the gates proved difficult and river silt from the James River would wear down the generator blades. This could make them unstable the generator and the blades were later moved to Peru, where they are still being used today. Moving forward, Richmond went with fossil fuels, which is very unfortunate as the hydro plant provided clean, renewable energy to the city. Just a year later, in 1964, the Arab oil embargo began, which greatly raised the price of oil. Had the plant held on for just a little bit longer, it might have still been in use for many years. In 1972, the iron works and the other factories followed suit and shut down, shortly followed by the railway line. In 1973, the island became a park. But without a train, how did people get here? Let's take things back a bit and talk about the bridge that towers over Belle Isle, known as the Robert E. Lee Bridge. In its earliest incarnation, it was a small wooden bridge called the James River Bridge. On November 4, 1934, it was dedicated as the Robert E. Lee Memorial Bridge. 
A month later, in December, tolls were installed. In 1985, plans were put into motion to rebuild the bridge. It went over budget, and when it was finished construction in 1988, it cost $43.5 million. Originally, people that wanted to go to Belle Isle Park had to traverse across the old train bridge, the one that I talked about earlier. However, not too long after the Robert E. Lee Bridge's reconstruction, a pedestrian bridge was installed underneath it, and on April 30th, 1991, this new bridge was dedicated, and now people were able to get to the island in a whole new way. While the railroad trestle is no longer used and gone from the north end of Belle Isle, the railroad trestle from the south end of Belle Isle is still there, and you can still use it to get onto the island. Currently, there are talks of reverting the name of the Robert E. Lee Bridge back to the James River Bridge. 1993 saw the construction of the Nature Center and Toilet, which is used as a storage house of sorts today. In 1995, Belle Isle, along with the other islands on the James River, were inducted into the National Register of Historic Places as significant historical sites. In the fall of 2001, parts of the movie Hannibal were shot here in Richmond, and Belle Isle made a cameo appearance. In early 2009, a three-foot-long piece of concrete fell from above, from the Robert E. Lee Bridge, hitting the pedestrian. It was shut down for several months as construction was done to make the pedestrian bridge safe again, and for many years to come, scaffolding was placed right here to protect the bridge from any more debris that might fall. Also in 2009, Belle Isle became a part of the James River Park System conservation. Despite industry having left Belle Isle many years ago, there is still a lot to see here and to do. Bikers like to ride around the island, and there is even a bike school area for true daredevils. Many people use Belle Isle as a launch point for kayaking the Hollywood Rapids. You can picnic, run, and dog walk. And with all the ruins, you can take a walk through not just Belle Isle's history, but Richmond's history. Some of these structures have been here for over 200 years. And while many things have come and gone over the years, it seems that Richmond's love of Belle Isle is here to stay. John Smith, one of the leaders of Jamestown, was part of a community. I'm going to put it over here. <laughs>